Apple has just released the RC version of iOS 17 and it's surprisingly very different from other RC versions. Well, usually the RC version would be just like a polished version of the last beta, but Apple has actually changed things and they have released 10 new features with the new release of the RC version of iOS 17, which again is coming out to the public Monday, the next week, September 18th. Now, besides all those cool features that we're going to talk about in a minute here, just take a look at the performance that I got from the RC version of iOS 17. This is amazing. The best score I ever got on this device, iOS 16, iOS 17, any one of them, this is the best score I got here with Geekbench 6. You can see the multi-core score is over 7,000. Actually, 7,017, this is the score with Geekbench 6 for iOS 17. Take a look at this score. Try it out if you have an iPhone 14 Pro Max on iOS 16, you won't even get close to this score. So iOS 17 is not only packed with new features and changes, but also performs really good. And also the single core score is very good as well at 2,650, which is again a great score for both of them, the single and the multi-core score. So the closest I got to this was beta 5 of iOS 17 at 7000 and now 7017 it's really really great now that we know that it performs really good let's move on to these amazing new features that apple has added with the rc version of ios 17. who would think that apple would make this change with the rc version of ios 17. they have finally added new ring tones so by going to sounds and haptics and ringtones, you will see here a bunch of new ringtones that Apple has added with the iOS 17 RC version. So let's just play a few of them here. So these are just some of the new ringtones that Apple has added to iOS 17. There are a bunch of those that you can select from. Finally, after so many years, we have new ringtones and not just new ringtones. We also have new text tones as well. Now, I'm not sure here which one of these is actually new because there are a lot of them. But by comparing them to another device on iOS 16, you will notice here a bunch of new text tones that Apple has added for iOS 17. There is also a new default tone for notifications on iOS 17. Even though you can still not change the default tone of notifications, there is a new one which is actually very welcome. And another change here that I'm not actually seeing on my device, but other people are, I don't know why this is happening. Maybe it's something that's region based or I don't know why this is happening. But here on Reddit on iOS beta, we have this post of this new button for the silent mode under the sound settings. Now, a few users are reporting seeing this. A few other users are reporting not seeing this on their device. I don't know why this is happening. Maybe something that's region based, hopefully in the near updates it will come to other devices as well but there is a silent mode switch right there which basically plays the same role as the switch here so it allows you to switch on and off the silent mode for your device now by going under sounds and haptics you will also have new options for haptics here and a bunch of wording changes right here so now we will have four different options so you will have the always play which of course means that it will always play haptics whether your iphone is on silent or ring mode and then you have never play which again of course never play haptics on silent or ring mode then you can play on the on silent and then you have don't play in silent mode so you will have a few different options here to choose from based on your preferences and of course as you can see here we have a bunch of wording changes basically they just explain what that option does now we have a lot of changes when it comes to the camera settings so by going under the camera settings and formats you will now find here pro raw and resolution control it used to be apple pro raw now we also have a resolution control control right there now if you enable this and go here to pro default you will have now three different options previously you would have the 12 and the 48 megapixel camera options now you will have the heif option right there then you will have pro raw at 12 megabytes per at 12 megapixels sorry and then you will also have pro raw max 
up to 48 megapixels. Now you can switch between any of these options from here. Or what you can do with the new feature that Apple has added, you can change that from, from the camera setting, from the camera app actually here. So they will have the format that you're currently using. You can enable or disable it directly from there. But you can also tap and hold there and now it will give you all the other options. So right here will have highlighted the one that you have currently selected and you can switch to the other ones as easy as that. Of course, once you have switched to another format, you can still turn it on or off directly from here. Another change you will find on the RC version of iOS 17 is the grid forecast for the home app. So if you use the home app, now you will have the grid forecast here and a pop up here basically explaining what, how you use the energy and what matters when you use energy. So if you actually use the home app, you will find the grid here under the energy section. As we talked about at the beginning of the video, iOS 17 is coming out this upcoming week, Monday 18th, it will be out to the public. But when it will be out, most likely as usual, at around 10 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're, of course, a lot of people will be on a different time zone. If you're on a different time zone, just go to Google and compare your time zone to the Pacific one, and you will get the exact hour when you can install iOS 17 on your device. But should you install it or not, the date comes out. Well, in my experience using iOS 17, since it has been released on the first beta, I actually had quite a good experience with this update. As you could see at the beginning of the video, the performance is really great. I have nothing to actually complain about when it comes to performance. The first few betas had a few like bugs here and there that would be annoying on everyday use like the keyboard not showing up or the app library not showing up or the Wi-Fi dropping a lot, but those have actually been fixed. And now since like three or four betas, I didn't have any problems problems whatsoever with this update. And actually since its initial release using it on daily basis on my daily device here, I never actually noticed that I had a, like a beta of a, such a major release installed on my device because, it's, because it was really good and really smooth from the beginning. So on that part, when it comes to performance and stability, I don't have any complaints. You can just go ahead and update immediately. But when it comes to battery, it's actually not the best ever. I'm not saying that you will get like horrible battery life, but of course you won't also get the best battery life ever out of iOS 17, especially with the initial release. Most likely on the next updates, this will improve a lot. So here are the last few days and what I got on my device, which is actually not that bad. Of course, taking into consideration that this device right here is at 89% battery health, which is again, terrible for a device that is almost one year old. And you can see right here at exactly 100% battery use, we have seven hours and 53 minutes on screen use, which is not that bad. And right here about 70% battery, we have six hours and 30 minutes, which again, not the best ever, but it's not that bad at all. Hopefully with the next updates, we will get better battery life. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. These are the cool new features that Apple has added to iOS 17 with the RC version. That's it. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you want to see more iOS 17 videos, which I will be releasing a ton of those starting Monday, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.